Hello again, this is Steve for Lessons Online TV. This is gonna, a video concerning verbs. This is going to be a long video. It's complicated. I even have a cheat sheet on my own. I do not know if it's, if it's visible. Uh, the topic is verbs. And I'm going to start like a bit of strict grammar concerning verbs. Because you need to understand, in my opinion, how to properly decide what you are going to do to a verb. Verbs are split into some categories in Greek, and you need to know what to do to each one of them, because otherwise you're just going to be doing something wrong, like fully, absolutely, totally wrong. So, let's start. We have verbs. As I hope I have said in previous videos, the first thing that verbs can be split into, like two categories, are active and passive voice. Generally, active voice signifies that this verb, that is an active voice, um, is an action and the person who is doing the action is doing it to somebody, like it has an object and this kind of action transitions to the object. That is not certain, for like it's not 100% like that, but in most cases that you will encounter you can think of it just like that. Passive voice shows that the action returns to the person who does the action. It's, um, it's passive voice, like the action returns back to the subject. In Greek, you can see, like if you take for granted, there is no infinitive in Greek. You, you just use a first person singular form in present tense to show this kind of thing, like what the infinitive stands for, in some cases in English, just to demonstrate the existence of a verb. Let's say you have a verb in the first person singular, uh, present tense. And then, what you're looking for is an omega ending or a me ending. These are all cases of verbs. You cannot find these suffixes and have a word not be a, ver not be a verb. It is 100% certain. Like, this is the one solid thing about Greek, like probably the first thing. Uh, there is no chance that these are not suffixes of a verb. We are all obviously saying this for the per first person singular. In the same way, all these suffixes are exclusive, like they're only one. If you see any of these suffixes for any of the different persons, or like singular or, or plural, then you can be sure that it is a verb. What you're looking at is a verb, but you need to know the rest of the suffixes. This is a long story. Uh, this is going to be another video. It's, it's really, really hard, at least in my opinion. After voices, you have conjugations. Like, obviously, in conjugating a verb, this is not what I'm talking about this time. Let's call conjugation something like categories. You can split verbs into two kinds of conjugations. The first kind of conjugation is the most common. Well, I think it is the most common. Let's call it like first type. Uh, no, sorry. This is like the first conjugation anyway. And it's for simple verbs with these kind of endings. This is not an accident. This is totally different. You're going to see meh in every kind of passive form of a verb. But ome is exclusive to the first conjugation. Some fine examples are lino, which is the solve to untie and so on, and linome, which is the passive voice form. And uh, there are a few more, like grafo, grafome, and so on. Generally, you have to remember that. In the first conjugation, you can only find, well, I hope you know how to count syllables, uh, you can only find uh, verbs that are, have their accent in the penultimate syllable. <coughs> in the penult, I think is the correct term. Penult syllable of the verb in, pre in uh, present, no, not necessarily present. In active voice, in, in the antepenult, in passive voice. That means that, I hope you know how to count syllables, like, uh, 
Ultima is the last one. Uh, penult is the, uh, the one exactly to the left, the previous from the last, the next to the last. And the antepenult is the, the one next to it. In this case, you have two syllables, for example, in this and for this verb, li, no. If this is the ultima, this is the penult, and as such, you have in the penult you have the accent, so this belongs to the first conjugation. Here, li, no, me. Here you have three syllables. This is the ultima, penult, antepenult. And the accent is in the antepenult, as such, it belongs to the first conjugation. Uh, same goes for grafo. Grafo. Grafo me. That, this is not really clear. This is like antepenult, penult, ultima, and you see the accent in the antepenult for the passive voice form and in the penult for the active voice form. That's the way you tell these apart. Now, this might look tough, I do not know, but this is like the easy part. Uh, there is a second conjugation, and I'm going to need a lot of space for this. Second conjugation. It splits into what I would understand as three types. In most grammar books and so on, you see two types. And the way I understand it, there are like three types, but it's like there are actually two types, and the third type is like an exception of the second, something like that. So, from the second conjugation, you split it again. Let's call them classes or types. Your, your call, I don't know. So, first type or class. Class. Are verbs that just have accents or have a vowel, not any vowel, alpha, and have this kind of passive voice. Examples are yellow, uh, yellow. And um, halal, halal. These are not exactly identical meanings. Uh, I forgot to say that before. Lino is to solve to untie. I said that. Grafo is to write. Yellow is to laugh. And halal is to break something, but not break as in break it in half or something. It's to make something go wrong, like uh, break a device. Not necessarily break it in half, but make, render it not working, not functional. Uh, these passive voice forms do not have an identical meaning. This is not like I break myself. This is like um, I don't feel right with that. It feels awkward, it feels wrong. And Yename uh, is to. I can't describe it right now, not really well. It's like to make fun of myself, it's like I'm trying to fool myself with something. Now, <clears throat> here you actually notice, and you're gonna need this, this, is, this applies to all the classes, just so you know this. You find, in the active voice, accent in ultima passive voice accent in penult yellow yeleme halau ha yeah, meh. If you count these syllables, like here you have the accent in the ultima, and here in the passive voice form you have the accent in the penult. Same goes for halal. Generally in all second conjugation verbs, this is what applies. It's like you go one accent towards the ultima compared to the first conjugation. In the first conjugation you have the accent 
and the penult for the active voice and the accent and the antepenult for the passive voice like three syllables from the end for passive, two syllables from the end for active and uh, this is like a uh, rule of thumb, that's how you actually recognize them I don't have a lot of space so, but I'm still gonna write this down for reference like uh, for the first you have active Penalt, passive, antipenalt. Now the word is becoming a mess. I hope this is not going to confuse everybody. But I'm going to take this example away and write this clearly. Now you have the second type, or call it class, whatever you will. I'm not. Um, I suppose there isn't a formal kind of uh, way to say it. Like instead of type or class, probably one of them is correct, but I do not know the correct word. And uh, passive voice, um, or um. Give me a bit of a bit of time here, this is tough. Examples fill at all. To consider, to think of the same thing applies, like uh, accent and ultima for the active voice and for the passive voice and penalt. And uh, this is like the second type. Each one of these I'm not just not writing this down for no reason. Each one of these has a different way of conjugating the verb. Like there is a different conjugation and they're actually called like they are different conjugations. You change the suffixes. If a verb is first class, second conjugation, it has different suffixes from second class, second conjugation verb. And that's why you need to know how to tell them apart. And here, this is like the most complex, that's what I said like before, as in, it's like an exception of the second class, uh, of the first class, sorry. Um, you have, let's label this with a hashtag, I don't know, a verb with an accent on it, and though, and in passive voice you have woman. A good example of this is tro, which is to eat. It's a really common verb. You encounter it everywhere, but it doesn't. None of these actually apply. Like it's not either of these categories. So it's like a third type for me. I haven't actually seen it written clearly somewhere. Tro, and then you have trovome. It's like to eat, to eat myself. It doesn't make a lot of sense. And uh, leo, to say. And levome. So, this mess is practically the way you can actually split up verbs. Now, these categories are not easy to memorize. You just learn the rule like um, where the accent should be, you understand which conjugation it is in and you can make every form of the verb you want. You just need to have one form and know all the suffixes of all the conjugations which is not an easy task. My recommendation is make a cheat sheet. You cannot pro possibly ever memorize these. That is my opinion. Just try as hard as you can. Read and uh, try to conjugate verbs. There are some conjugation programs online and stuff like that. I will cite some sources. I didn't just think of these or just remember them from school. I researched a bit before making the video. And uh, try to uh, familiarize yourself with the language. Like, you cannot possibly memorize just by heart without ever using the words. All these kind of divisions and the classes and the, su the suffixes for each one of them. You actually need to use it somewhere. So, this 
is it overall. These are the verbs. But uh, I have nothing else to write. I have to say that even though these are active and passive, which usually denote an action happening to something, as I said, or passive voice like an action returning to the subject, that is not always the case. This is extreme. I'm just saying it just so I have said it, you know, just to be complete. There are some verbs that are written in passive voice, for example, but have an active mood. I do not know if that's the word in English, grammatically correct. But um, it's a verb that behaves grammatically, completely, like a passive voice verb. Like, you do everything the correct way, the conjugations, you know, the persons, and so on. But its meaning is as if it was an active voice verb. Just keep it in mind that you might encounter such a kind of verb for example, a good example of that is hyperaspizome, which is to defend, to support, and stuff like that, which is a passive voice verb. Uh, as you can see, it has me at the end, so it's definitely passive. But its meaning is to defend. It's uh, I defend something, I do not just defend myself. So you might encounter this kind of verb. It's not really that important. So, that is it, I think, concerning verbs. Uh, and uh, I will see you in the next video, whatever that might be.